Welcome to the 2021 11th Annual Pastures Please program. My name is Bo Neal and I serve as the Fayette County Agricultural and Natural Resources Extension Agent. Uh, we're so delighted to have you joining us this evening. Uh, the fact that you've taken time out of your schedule means a lot to us. Uh, I hope you took note of some of the upcoming events listed on the slide uh, playing before the program there. If you need more details on any of those, please feel free to reach out to your respective county agent or any other specialist at any time, and we can fill you in on those. Uh, I think you'll be excited about the topics that we have on the agenda for you tonight. Uh, before we get started, just a few particulars throughout the evening. If you have any questions, uh, just leave those in the chat box. Uh, Steve Mewson, Ag Agent in Jessamine County, will be monitoring those and, and helping me out. Uh, we'll have time to take a few questions possibly between speakers and then we'll have a general question and answer session at the end of the program tonight. Uh, another note to make, this program will qualify as your CAPE credit or your County Ag Improvement Program educational credit. Uh, so when you go to turn those materials in to your county agent or that county administrator, uh, just verify with them and if they need to verify with us, we can do so. You can also shoot me an email at bo.neal, B-E-A-U dot N-E-A-L at uky.edu if you need verification for attendance tonight, and I would be glad to send that back to you. Uh, first up on our agenda tonight uh, is Dr. Lori Lawrence. Uh, she'll be our first speaker. Dr. Lawrence has been on faculty at the university since 1992. Her program centers around equine nutrition research and teaching equine nutrition science and evaluation to both graduate and undergraduate students. She has received countless awards for both teaching and equine research and has traveled extensively giving lectures and presentations in countries all over the world. We're so glad to have her join us tonight. Uh, good evening, Dr. Lawrence. Thank you, Bo, I'm happy to be here. So I'm gonna try sharing my screen. Okay, well, I'm really happy to be here. I saw a lot of the folks that were signed up are uh, friends and people that I know, and I feel so bad that we aren't together so we could actually talk to each other. But I'm really happy that everyone's been able to at least come to Pastures Please in this format. It's certainly, it's been a learning experience for everybody, but um, so we're gonna get started. Uh, Bo asked me to talk a little bit about managing carbohydrates in horse diets. And so that's uh, basically what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna start with what is a carbohydrate. And so carbohydrates are compounds that are made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And they're typically in the ratio of one carbon to two hydrogens um, and one oxygen. So you can think of them perhaps as hydrated carbons. Um, that's basically what the formula would be. And the carbohydrates that horses consume come from plants. And so plants make carbohydrates. Um, plants are remarkable things because they can take um, carbon dioxide and they'll take six molecules of carbon dioxide and combine that with six molecules of water. And then in the presence of sunlight um, with a process called photosynthesis, they actually take those two compounds and synthesize glucose. And so glucose is simply um, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And then in addition to synthesizing the glucose, they also release oxygen into the environment. And so without the plants, we couldn't live because there wouldn't be any oxygen. The plants then take this glucose and either use it for their own metabolism um, right away, or they can take it and make it into other compounds. And so a lot of times we will use this term that's called complex carbohydrate. And sometimes we talk about that in human, human nutrition as well. One of the most common complex carbohydrates that we think about would be starch. And starch is simply um, either a chain or a branched uh, molecule that contains many glucose molecules. So it's essentially just many, many glucoses hooked together. And typically we consider it to be a storage carbohydrate. So the plant stores it, so it has it for later use. And it's typically stored um, in the seeds and the grains, although they'll be a little bit so stored elsewhere as well. Another complex carbohydrate is cellulose. 
which is also many glucose molecules hooked together. And so chemically, cellulose and starch are pretty much the same. The big difference is that they have different types of bonds that join the glucose molecules together. And that becomes important later on when we think about how these compounds are digested by the horse. Whereas starch is a storage compound, um, cellulose is primarily associated with the structural components of the plant. So it's considered a structural carbohydrate and it is found in the plant cell wall. So it helps to provide the plant with that substance so that it can stand up as it's growing. Some other complex carbohydrates that we think about in terms of horse nutrition include pectin and hemicellulose and fructan. So I wanted to give you an example of what the sort of carbohydrate assortment might be if we were thinking about um, a common type of hay, which in this case I chose mature orchard grass hay. And so if we just took this mature orchard grass hay and then we analyzed it, we would find out that it's about 10% water or 10% moisture. It's about 7% lignin, um, which which isn't exactly a carbohydrate, but a lot of times it's clumped with the carbohydrates because it's oftentimes complex with other carbohydrates in the plant. This mature orchard grass hay would be about 33% cellulose. It would be about 20% hemicellulose. It would be about 5% fructan, about 5% sugar, and about 1% starch. And then this hay will also contain about 10% protein, and somewhere in the neighborhood of 9% lipids, minerals, vitamins, other types of um, compounds. But I put all of these, the cellulose, the hemicellulose, the fructan, the sugar, and the starch together, because those are really the primary carbohydrates that we're thinking about that are in this plant. So when we think about mature orchard grass hay, or we could be talking about mature brome hay or mature Timothy hay um, on an as-is or an as-fed basis, it's about 64% carbohydrate. So when folks say that they wanna feed their horse a low carbohydrate diet, it's not really accurate because all of these things are carbohydrates. And if we did away with all these carbohydrates in the horse's diet, there wouldn't be much left to feed them. So anyway, I want you to kind of keep that in mind that what we're talking about here is basically the forages that we feed to horses are gonna be high in carbohydrates, but we're gonna think a little bit about the different types of carbohydrates. So keep in mind that yes, horses are herbivores because they eat plants, but I think of them as carbivores because carbohydrates are the primary component of the horse's diet. But we need to realize that not all carbohydrates are the same. The plants don't use them the same and the horses don't digest them all the same. So let's talk a little bit about carbohydrate digestion in the horse. And let me orient you to this. So. Here we have this mare and she's consuming some uh, pasture and she's gonna chew that up and she's gonna swallow it. It's gonna go down her esophagus. This pink thing here is her stomach. Then we have the small intestine and then the blue represents the, um, the large intestine which would be include the cecum and the colon. So starches and sugars that are found in these forages um, can be digested and absorbed in the small intestine. And when that happens, they are broken down um, into individual molecules of glucose or sometimes uh, fructose, and they will be absorbed into the horse's bloodstream. On the other hand, the cellulose and the hemicellulose and the pectin and the fructans are not digested in the small intestine. They're bonded together in a way that horses don't make the enzymes to be able to break those down. So they bypass digestion in the stomach and the small intestine, and they go to the colon and the cecum. And there, those compounds are going to be broken down by the microbial community that inhabits the large intestine of the horse. And whereas the things that were absorbed from the small intestine are absorbed as glucose, the things that are broken, the carbohydrates that are fermented in the large intestine will be absorbed as what we call volatile fatty acids or short chain fatty acids. And those provide calories to the horse, but they're not quite as efficient a source and producing them is not as efficient as it is to break down and absorb glucose. So if we were to think about those different carbohydrates that we talked about that are found in this orchard grass hay, and think about how digestible they are by the horse. If we first start with lignin, which I said is not exactly a carbohydrate, but in many cases it's sort of clumped with them because they are often 
um, physically uh, attached, um, lignin is considered to be very indigestible. So it's only about zero to 10% digestible by the horse. So horses aren't gonna get much utilization out of that lignin in terms of a nutrient source. If we think about the cellulose, which was a major component of that orchard grass hay, cellulose in the horse's digestive tract is somewhere around 35 to 40% digestible. So that means that somewhere between uh, 60 and 65% of the cellulose is actually gonna come out in the feces and be non-digested. Now, hemicellulose, which is uh, another complex carbohydrate, um, which is also present in this orchard grass hay, it's actually a little bit more digestible than the cellulose. It's around 45 to 50% digestible. And then if we look at the fructan and the sugar and the starch, well, they're highly digestible, somewhere between 95 and 100% of these compounds that are found um, in this orchard grass hay will disappear and be absorbed by the horse in some form or another. Okay, so what we see is that we have these different carbohydrates and they have different availabilities and different nutrient values in terms of the horse. They're all carbohydrates, but they're really different in terms of how the horse can utilize them. And that makes it a big difference in terms of how we think about the carbohydrates and the different feeds that we use. So I wanted to make a couple of little pie charts to try to illustrate that. Um, and this is the first one. And so I'm going to start here with oats. So this would be oat grain, whole oats or rolled oats, however you would you prefer to think about them. And what I've done is to, um, in my pie chart, I'm trying to divide up the total amount of carbohydrates into the six categories that we just talked about. So in this pie chart, lignin is this dark blue slice. And then the medium blue splice, slice is going to be cellulose. And then this turquoise slice is going to be hemicellulose. And then the gold or orange slice is actually starch. And the little red slice is sugar. And there's really not much fructan in um, whole oats. But what you can see here is that these less digestible carbohydrates, such as the lignin and the um, cellulose and the hemicellulose, they are in relatively small quantities compared to the highly digestible carbohydrates. And so most of the carbohydrates that are in oats, as well as in other cereal grains like corn or barley, those are gonna be highly digestible to the horse and the horse will be able to get a lot of calories out of those. On the other hand, if we think about our mature orchard grass hay, um, and we look at this, um, here we have the dark blue slice and you can see that it's much bigger. So it's, there's a lot more lignin here in this mature hay. Here is the medium blue slice that would be the cellulose and it's also much larger. And then here we have the hemicellulose and then the, uh, the yellow and the orange and the red are going to represent the amount of fructan and the amount of starch and the amount of simple sugars. So here you can see that for this mature orchard grass hay, it is predominantly the types of carbohydrates that are relatively low in digestibility. And it has a relatively small proportion of the more digestible carbohydrates. And so most of the carbohydrates that are found in mature orchard grass hay are less than 50% digestible. And that means that as a feed, this mature orchard grass hay is gonna provide a lot fewer calories to the horse than say the oats would have. So I think probably everybody grasps that and gets that. But because this is pastures please, I figured I needed to at least say something about pasture. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between the carbohydrates in hay and the carbohydrates in pasture. And so typically, um, in many cases, when we make hay, we make hay when the plant is somewhat more mature as it's accumulated some mass out there in the field. Um, and in a mature plant, we would see these seed heads and we would see more um, well-defined stems. On the other hand, a lot of times when our horses are grazing in the pasture, they are grazing material that is much more vegetative. It's in an earlier stage of growth. And so the, the plant leaves are much finer and much softer. Um, we don't see the seed heads there, okay? So, um, and so as the horses are out there in the pasture, whether they're consuming something that looks like this or something that looks like this, it's gonna affect the actual distribution of carbohydrates that they are consuming. 
So the pie chart over on your left hand side is going to represent the carbohydrates that are in the mature orchard grass hay. So this is the same one that I showed before, where we can see that lignin, cellulose, and hemicellulose comprise the great amount of the material that's there. On the other hand, if we look at the carbohydrates that are in pasture, and this would be a cool season pasture grass, we can see that um, the red area, which is the sugar component, is a little bit wider than it was for the hay. So there's a little bit more sugar. Um, there's still not very much starch, that's the orange one, but we see that there's a little bit more of the yellow, which would be the fructan. Okay. So there is a little bit more of these highly digestible carbohydrates. And so that contributes to the fact then that the pasture is gonna be a little bit higher in calories. The other thing that you should observe is that when we compare the amount of lignin or the really indigestible stuff, it's a lot less here in this rapidly uh, or vegetative pasture. And then the other thing that we would observe is that the proportion between the cellulose which is not very digestible, and the hemicellulose, which is a little bit more digestible, is also different. And so as we look at this component here, we see that the shift in these um, structural carbohydrates has moved more towards the ones that are more digestible and away from the ones that are less digestible. So what happens is now that the pasture has changed, the carbohydrate types have changed, and the pasture is way more digestible, than the mature orchard grass was. And so we might not think of them as being different because they're both grasses, but they can be tremendously different. And it means that the pasture now becomes a much higher calorie source for the horse than the orchard grass hay was. So what does that mean? Well, that means that when we have, we're feeding our horses, if we have mature stemmy forage, there's fewer digestible nutrients. On the other hand, if we have immature and vegetative forage, there's more digestible nutrients. And so we need to consider that in terms of our feeding programs, what we're putting in front of the horse, what the horse is gonna be consuming. So the question then becomes, well, so what should I be feeding? Do horses need really digestible, high nutrient density forages? And the answer to that is, well, it depends. And it depends upon what the horse's job description is and what their nutrient requirements are. So if we're talking about lactating mares, um, they require many more nutrients than a sedentary horse. If we're talking about a high level performance horse, they also require more nutrients uh, and more calories. And likewise, if we're talking about a weanling, they require uh, more calories and more nutrients. So when we feed a highly digestible forage like these that have readily available carbohydrates, we generally don't have to feed as much concentrate as if we're feeding a less digestible forage. And so these higher, uh, more digestible, higher nutrient density forages are good for horses with high requirements. On the other hand, if you live with Porky Pete, the pasture ornament, or Fatty Patty, the pasture ornament, highly digestible, high nutrient density forages may not be the best choice. And so we've all seen where we put a horse out that looked like this in uh, end of April, and they went out on a pasture. And in a New York minute, they looked like this one. And then next week, they looked like this one. And so this high quality pasture that's out there, that's really high in nutrients, can really cause horses to gain weight really rapidly, even though it's still grass, it's still pasture, the availability of those carbohydrates and the digestibility is relatively high and the horses can gain weight really rapidly. So one of the goals then when we think about managing the carbohydrates in our horses diets is that we need to think about matching the nutrient content and the, the assortment of carbohydrates with the nutrient needs of the horse. And so horses with higher nutrient needs can receive those higher nutrient content forages and higher, or what we might think of as higher quality forages. All, horse, all horses should get clean, hygienic quality uh, forages, but in terms of nutrient quality, the horses that have higher needs need the higher quality forages. Horses that have lower needs, have lower, can be fed horse feeds with lower nutrient content or a lower nutrient quality forage. Now folks always say, um, and in many cases, it's, it's a good way to think of it. Um, couldn't I just feed this higher quality hay 
Um, I would have less waste because the horses would find it really palatable. Um, and maybe I could just restrict intake to my horses with low nutrient needs. And then um, I could feed less hay and would that be okay? And you can definitely absolutely do that. You can take a high quality forage and you can feed less of it and meet the horse's needs. You can do that, but I'm not sure we all want to do that because horses are driven to chew on things and they in normal environments would probably be spending 60 to 70% of their time grazing and chewing. And when we restrict forage intake, then we can have some side effects from that that we may not want. So carbohydrates, one of the take home messages is that horses eat a lot of them and there's many different types. So let me just address a little bit about sugar and fructan because those are things that people are concerned about. So the sugar that are in forages are produced during the daylight and then they're used at night by the plants. So what that means is that when we think about the amount of sugar that's out in our pasture, it goes up in the afternoon on sunny days sugars are used at night and so the sugar content is lower in the morning. But that is also affected by geographical region, the amount of light intensity, the temperature, the length of day, and it's also affected by different plants. High sugar forages have been developed um, and they tend to be more digestible. They usually have more calories and they may be more palatable so animals will eat more. And those forages have really been designed to um, for uh, livestock production because they promote gain and they promote milk production. But horses are not cows and so those forages produced for cattle may not be the best forages available for horses and I think something that we need to think about as we're starting to plant our pastures and think about those ideas. So a little bit of a review, um, high sugar forages can be, uh, they can promote an increase in glucose and in blood insulin. And that's not usually a concern for normal healthy horses. However, <clears throat> if we have horses that have some kind of metabolic disorder, such as metabolic syndrome or Cushing's disease or laminitis or some type of insulin dysregulation, then those high sugar forages may be a concern. And that means then that we need to stay away from those for our horses with this particular situation. When we think about fructan, it's a little bit different because fructan does not necessarily contribute to an increase in blood glucose because fructan may not be digested in the small intestine, but it can bypass the small intestine and then be rapidly fermented in the large intestine. And that rapid fermentation can produce a lot of acid and so that can drive down the pH in the large intestine and that can disrupt the microbes that live there. And a disturbed microbial population can result in diarrhea, it can result in colic, it can even result in laminitis. And so those high fructan forages um, are probably, can be problematic. But I also want you to realize that it's not just about composition, it's also about total intake and it's about availability. And so when we think about the growth pattern of forages here, particularly in Kentucky and everywhere else would have a different curve, you know, the amount of forage that's available in the pasture is low. Um, so down here, and then in the early spring, the amount of available forage increases. And so the horses are able to consume large quantities here, and then it goes back down. And so even though we get some compositional changes, we also need to think about in the context of how much the horses are eating. So horses are carbivores, and our job is to manage the amount and the type of carbohydrates that they receive. And I think I'm about out of time. Um, and so I will stop there and take any questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Lawrence. Uh, I, we might have a time for a quick question or two. Steve, you got any? Yeah, um, there was a question in, uh, if this presentation will be available as a recorded podcast, and we will be sending that out and will also be loaded to YouTube. So we'll, uh, we'll make that information available. There have been a couple of questions also. Uh, first one is uh, I'm a new horse owner and worry about avoiding foundering. Not sure how long to leave the horses in the grass in different seasons. The horses mature and already overweight, used for kids and trail riding. Right, that's a, that's a really good question. And this, there's, it's a really long answer. It's not simple. Um, 
so one of the things I think to to realize is that if they stay in, if the, if you have a really well managed and abundant pasture and your horse is already too fat, they're just going to get fatter. And so you're going to have to think about ways to avoid that. The most common thing that people would do would be to use, say, a grazing muzzle to restrict intake. Um, you can also um, restrict intake by uh, keeping them off the pasture. But unless you do that consistently, if you let them out for, say, even eight hours, they just ramp up their intake. And so, you know, it's like being hungry when you go to the buffet. You're going to eat more, and they do the same if you keep them in the stall. Okay. And they're not full. <clears throat> And it's Steve. Yes, uh, another question here. Um, it's okay, we'll move on. We can get them at the end. I, I, uh, well, I see that there's one about low fructan forage. Yes. So um, Dr. Smith had a graduate student who did some um, work looking at levels of um, fructan and sugars in different types of forages. And Ray, I think at least in our hands, we would um, say that in general, perennial ryegrass tends to be on the high side and the orchard grass tends to be on the low side. So at least here in central Kentucky, that's sort of the, with, with tall fescue and bluegrass and probably Timothy in the middle. So if I was looking for a low fructan forage, I would be going and low sugar forage, I would be going out and looking for orchard grass. So. And if you were in an area of the country that you could grow Bermuda grass dependably, uh -huh. then, then right. that would be one as well. But that, that's a warm season forage, doesn't do as well in our area. Right. 